Welcome everybody uh, back. Annual time of the year to talk about uh, you know what we've all been anticipating, which is obviously the start of our first time together, and uh, continue to be really, really excited and really fortunate uh, to be representing IU. Uh, our staff and our staff's families have been treated uh, with the utmost courtesy and care, and uh, it's a great place to be in terms of living in Bloomington and being a part of something that's really, really special. And uh, we felt that. And as we get ready to start our first season um, together, we're all very, very comfortable here and uh, really focused, to be honest with you, in trying to do the things that we all want to do. Um, I'll address you know, college basketball setting right now. Um, that way I think we can get some things out of the way. And I'm as surprised as anyone just like 99 probably percent of the, the basketball world uh, about what's going on. Uh, I've had very uh, little information other than what you guys have. Um, so I'll probably stay away from commenting on the actual facts. Uh, when it comes to Arizona, obviously very prideful there with my family. And uh, I've been able to talk to Sean only one time, very briefly to you know, add my support. Um, Brings it back to Indiana, I've obviously as a staff and myself, I've met with Fred uh, multiple times and uh, we've talked about a lot of things and have no reason to think that Indiana is involved in anything um, right now. And uh, we're focused on uh, the tasks, so to speak, at hand, which running this program was clearly defined, I think, on day one and the expectations of doing things the right way. And, uh, you know, with that, we'll kind of put that to bed. Um, First practice as the Indiana head coach on Friday um, afternoon. Uh, it's really, really an exciting thing for me. Um, our team has continued to really stay with it. Uh, we had an excellent summer together. As you get to the fall, we're in our preseason mode, uh, which for us, we spent two days a week on the floor as a team in a practice setting. So we've continued to sort of build uh, the foundation uh, through the fall. We've had some guys do some excellent things improving their bodies, improving their game, and obviously starting to understand the way we do things, um, how we play, it, it has been interesting to see. So now that we get ready to start and you're with them every single day, um, this is a time that we hope to really, really take some steps and start to really gain some ground where we can start to see uh, the benefits of playing the style. We're gonna play with the people that in the right roles. Role definition has really been interesting so far. I think that's where we're, as a staff, teaching things the right way and then creating roles is something we're going to try and do here in the next three or four weeks. Um, I think that the leadership on our team has clearly um, came back to the same guys. I think our older players have really done an outstanding job uh, taking the reins of the team, showing by example, and then continuing to improve themselves. Robert Johnson, uh, I think I've said this multiple times, uh, I've never seen a guy as motivated uh, physically uh, to be where he's at right now. He's probably the best conditioned player uh, that I've ever been around. Uh, and that's not to say our other guys aren't doing a great job. I think Rob has really stood out uh, from a fall perspective in the preseason of really continuing to stay on the course of wanting to have a great year. Uh, he's talked more. I think that Colin Hartman and Josh Newkirk, uh, two guys that have really brought a spirit when I'm around, that they're, uh, the way that they communicate with each other and they, their teammates bring such a positive vibe, even when they're not doing well personally. I think that's been a, been a big step. Uh, I think that, you know, juniors, uh, and I look at Juwan in particular, and I think Juwan has an opportunity to really create a new vision for himself from a basketball perspective. He's a tremendous kid, a hard worker. Uh, but I think he's having to learn uh, a little bit about responsibility of production. You know, he's going to be asked to do things and get production in a way that he hasn't. And that's been interesting to kind of see how he's developed. Um, you know, not getting down on himself if things aren't going well because, you know, he's going to be needed to do things not only with his voice but his game. I continue to look at our sophomore class with Deron, uh, Devontae, and uh, Curtis has been pivotal, pivotal guys with different roles that can continue to 
keep Indiana as a as a as a team that's continuing to compete to win and do things. And, and those guys, you know, have really answered the bell. They all are doing a really nice job for us. Our three freshmen um, have stayed as consistent as any group I've been around. Uh, I think all three of them are terrific additions as people and players. I also think that they have been a um, very, very mature group on and off the court, which has added a lot of value to our program. Um, they're very businesslike, they care, they work very, very hard, and they're all learning the game in a fast way. And I think the big thing for those guys is to stay the course here early in the year and find, find their niche. And, uh, you know, the other guys have all had great off seasons and fall as well. From Zach McRoberts to Freddie McSwain to Tim Priller. Um, <coughs> I know I'm probably missing some guys here. Uh, but in general, I'm very, very pleased as we had our practice. Um, I guess I can open it up right now, and you guys can kind of have at it a little bit. I think that'll paint a, a clearer picture um, for, for what we're getting ready to head into. Yes, sir. You got a I've got, yeah, I've got a microphone. Um, go with Pete first, and then we'll go to Bob. Want to take him, give him the mic? Pete? OK. <coughs> RJ, uh, Pete DiPremio, IU Athletics. Um, just how do you see the defense shaping up? How uh, it, I, I'm sure it's not where you want it to be yet, but, but where is it at and where do you need it to be? We've spent, I'd say, 75-25 in our team workouts, defense to offense. Um, you know, we're, we're having the base stuff put in. We're building. We're not as sophisticated as, as we're going to be, but I think from a base perspective, our team is learning what we're about, especially in the half court. Um, it's an adjustment. You know, it's really an adjustment. It's, it's repetition after repetition. It's technique after technique. It's film after film from this point forward. Um, but I think we'll be, you know, um, I think we'll be a team that hopefully can continue to really improve. Sometimes it's going to take games. These guys are going to have to experience it in a game, see it on film in a game. And that's kind of what's happened throughout my coaching careers. Uh, you develop defensively as a team just as well as you do offensively. Uh, I don't expect on day one we're going to be, uh, you know, the steel curtain, so to speak. But I think that we're going to be a team that prides itself on that. Our guys know that. And individual defenders will improve just like they do on offense. But um, we're sticking to the script. We were starting, we started in the summer, and we'll, we'll be here in the fall. And I think from our practice perspective right now, we're going to try and be great on both. We're spending an abnormal amount of time on it. Archie Buck, Travis with WTHR in Indianapolis. What areas do you feel really confident about this team, and what are some of the real challenges that you think you face heading into the season? Um, I would say that the, some of the things that uh, I feel good about is I feel like having a physically strong backcourt with Robert and, and Josh and Devontae Curtis and a young Al, that's a five-man crew um, that I feel is sturdy, uh, strong, and, and should be able to compete on both ends of the floor with regardless of who we play. I think shooting is something that I'm hoping can be a strength. I've watched our team over the course of the spring and summer and fall. We have a lot of guys right now I think that take, take some pride in being able to shoot the ball. So I think we can stretch the floor a little bit. Uh, concerned is obviously you know, going into things, learning how to win doing things our way, they're not going to understand how to win doing things our way yet. And, you know, being able to compete and win tough games on the road or at home or early in the season, we're not going to be as familiar or as good at our stuff as we would have been normally if it's a team that's been together two or three years. And I also think that when you look at our front court depth, that's definitely something that you have to keep in mind in terms of how deep are we really in the games when it comes to the front court with fouls and whatnot. So developing a rotation there and having guys that can maybe play multiple positions is something that we're considering. Mark, you can't buy Pete's.com inside Indiana. It's, at the point guard position, or at least ball handler, uh, for triggering the offense, Josh Newkirk had a lot of time there last year. Just what are you looking for from your point guards and who kind of emerges those guys that are going to be able to run things? It's, it's ironic, you know, Josh has clearly established himself as a clear-cut point guard. Um, I think that everybody else on our team can play a couple spots. I think Josh is primarily a point guard. Um, that position for us is essential in running the show. you got to be able to push the ball and you got to have great tempo, but you also have to be able to play smart when you're playing fast and be able to control it and playing with low turnovers, I and mean, that's really about it. 
guys who could potentially see it, point guard Al Durham, uh, for sure. Robert uh, could potentially see some time there. And I'm, I'm honestly thinking about looking at Devontae and some situations with the ball in his hands as a point guard, just because I think Devontae can really uh, be creative at times off the bounce and create great things for, the, for, for he and others. But primary roles right now, I see Josh and I see, you know, as I named him, those guys all playing a role. And then, you know, we'll have to see how, how, it, how it goes. Hey, RG. Mike Miller with the Bloomington Herald Times. Um, just as far as role definition, do you see any similarities with this group and some of the teams you've coached in the past as far as guys who can play multiple positions and kind of space it out a little bit? Yeah, I think so. You know, we were very, we had a lot of versatility at Dayton just because of undersized. And I think we have some of those guys here. You know, you're going to look to see guys like uh, Juwan being able to stretch the floor for you. Can a guy like Justin Smith as a young freshman play multiple positions? I don't know. I think Zach McRoberts has value with that. He can do a lot of good things playing multiple positions. But we're going to give our team the freedom here early to experience some mistakes with multiple ball handlers in transition and a lot of guys handling the ball in the half court that maybe they haven't done as much in the past. But yeah, similar. We have some guys that can really do a lot of different things. Zach, I'm sorry, Zach Gosford, you have to start. I want just, just to circle back around one more time to kind of the broader issues you're addressing with college basketball up front. It, does it, any of this kind of change the way everything works day to day for you right now? Do you do you talk to players about being more careful? I mean, I, I know there's just so much that's kind of uncertain at this point. Does any of it change sort of the, the way you go about it day to day, or do you just kind of stay abreast of it and, and just do things business as usual? We're business as usual here, um, I think. Um, just to, in, in regards to us and our staff, we're business as usual, approaching things very, very similar to the way we do things day to day. I think you know, everyone's probably taking a step back and is, a, and is obviously a little bit um, reserved or a little bit uh, guarded. Um, but as you look at your own players and whatnot, you, you have to remind them with, with great urgency to, to you know, do things the right way. Um, and I don't have any reason to believe they're not. Alex Bozich inside the hall.com. Um, Archie, I'm curious about Clifton Moore. Mm -hmm. And you, you mentioned the front court depth, and, and at this point, kind of the development you've seen out of him since he got here, and, and where you maybe envision him fitting in in the front court this season. Well, Cliff is uh, the one thing Clifton has really done is he's put on about 14 pounds since the first day on campus. So he's right around 220 right now. And that's, mm -hmm. that's helping him, but he's still not strong enough as a as because he's so young I mean, he's such a young kid um, so, but he's got to learn the game as a front court player on both ends of the floor um, as a freshman the physicality standpoint is a little different for him right now and then from an offensive standpoint put him in situations where he can be successful um, and, and where you can use him i feel that as a cliff and because of the way he works and is gifted athletically and talented will show glimpses as a freshman of what he can be my hope is that he can help us at multiple positions in the front court with uh, our depth. And I think that uh, as the season applies in the January, February, March, you can see a guy really blossom into uh, what we think is going to be a star one day. But early on here, um, he's like, I don't want to say wet behind the ears or a little young, but he's like a slippery, slippery guy on ice skates out there at times, you know, just, just getting his footing. But you've seen him go in big, big uh, jumps week to week where he is. From a conditioning level, from a mobility standpoint, he's as gifted as any player I've ever been around. And I think that speaks volumes. His length is something that you can't really judge offensively and defensively in terms of being able to make some plays. So he's got great attributes that he can be good, but he's got to learn the college game like every young guy does. Jeff and Dave. Jeff Rebbe Who do you feel are most likely your three or four best offensive players, the guys you, you look at? to get the offensive production at this point? I think Duran is a very gifted offensive player. Um, for, all for, for all the things that people want to see in, in, uh, in front court players, uh, jumping, you know, all that good stuff, Duran has terrific footwork, amazing hands, and great touch, and I think he can score the ball for us. Uh, I think Robert's a proven scorer over the time in his college career and will continue to do that. Um, with minutes and, and, and how it's dispersed, I think that Juwan has to become an offensive threat. Juwan has to become more of an offensive-minded player from a production standpoint. And uh, he's got great skills. I think he's got to do it, you know, consistently over over the course of some months. But I think Juwan has the ability, and not that everyone can't score, obviously, 
I look at Devontae as a, as a guy that can get his own shot, a guy that can create for himself off of ball screens and, and get to the basket, get fouled and whatnot. So, um, you know, as I look at the shooting on our team, guys like Curtis, guys like Colin, uh, those guys, you know, have made shots, you know, in workouts and whatnot. So, you know, you always have the ability with shooting on the floor to get a guy that, you know, can stretch it a little bit. But, you know, I'm probably leaving, like I said, you always leave some guys off. I think, you know, you look at a guy like Josh. Josh finished the season last year really strong, scoring about 10 a game. So, but from a pure how are we going to operate getting scores, um, I look at Deron, I look at Robert, and I look at guys like Juwan as being guys that we can really focus in on sometimes and get them touches. Charlie, would you raise your hand so we can get a mic back to you? Sure. Dave, go ahead. Hi, Coach. Uh, Dave Blair from Channel 13. Talk a little bit about Colin Hardman. What makes him so special, and what do you see for him in the offseason now he come along? Well, he's got a great attitude, number one. Uh, he's got a great feel and IQ for the game. Uh, he, he understands how to play. Um, he's smart. Uh, and I think physically he's, from what I can tell, I'm just not asking him. Physically, I think he's confident, uh, which is a good thing. He's in great shape. Just looking at his mobility and whatnot, I don't think he's a guy that's a little bit tentative. I think he's comfortable right now with who he is in terms of mobility. So um, I think it'll take, like I said, it's going to take him some time to get through five on five playing to get his true rhythm back. But he definitely has a great feel and IQ. You can tell he's smart. Um, but attitude more than anything, leadership, uh, unquestioned, you know, every day you know what you're getting. Charlie? Charlie Clifford, Wish TV, Indianapolis. That two and a half week stretch, Duke, Michigan, <clears throat> Iowa, Louisville, Notre Dame. Have you ever been through anything like that in a non conference slate? And how interested are you to see how these guys respond to those two and a half weeks? Well, this is probably as challenging um, of a schedule as anyone has probably ever faced, just due to the fact of the condensed schedule, uh, the advanced Big Ten games early in December, um, and the amount of games that we're going to play in between it's going to put a real tax on the body but early you know our non-conference schedule is one of which that's going to pro provide a lot of information on what we're going to need to do to be successful through the course of the regular season um, in big 10 play you're playing against legit high major teams really good players great coaches you're not always going to be at home and we're going to get you know so to speak punched a lot and we're going to figure out you know, how we respond to those things. We're going to figure out how we can improve from those things. And we're obviously going to go into those games with a group of people that have a, their antennas up that you have to be ready tonight or it's not going to work out well for you. So, but I think it's definitely as challenging of a schedule as we've had. And I think it's going to teach us, you know, what we're going to need to be this year. Archie, this is Mike Tegger from Peaks.com. You've coached some New York City area guards before. Do you, do you see some of those same traits in, in Devontae Green? Mm -hmm. And I want also want to ask you how Ray, Ray Thompson is doing. Well, Devontae, yes, he's definitely an East Coast guard. Um, you know, he is a he's got a lot of confidence in himself. Um, he's got a lot of uh, city in his game in terms of how he maneuvers, plays. Um, he's got a lot of style. Now we got to take a little bit of his style, tone it down to just get get a layup. Doesn't need to be that pretty type of thing. Or you know, don't try to make the play every single time. But he's done a really nice job, and I think in identifying him here early, he's a guy that, you know, I think he can really thrive with how we play. He's got to do it within our framework, but I think he can. And he has definitely got a little East Coast to him, and he's competitive as well, um, especially in, in the practice setting. The thing I like about Devontae, when focused, uh, has been tremendous defensively. Uh, he's given me great confidence that he could be an Indiana defender, um, maybe here earlier than some of the other guys. He's got great instincts. Great quickness, physical, tough, and I think just more so than anything, when you look at both sides of the ball, I think he's got some of that. Race has done a phenomenal job, uh, very difficult challenge. Enrolling in school, no summer. You have to basically take on what these other freshmen did for six weeks, and you have to do it right away. And he's done a great job. One, uh, he's got to rehabilitate, rebuild, and recondition his body. He's a high school senior. And he's gotten through 30 days, and he's done a good job with it. But he's got, you know, nine, ten, ten months ahead of him where he's, that's, that's going to be a big priority. Uh, he's gotten off to a great start off the floor in school, and he also is, is a tremendous <coughs> kid. So we're happy about Race's development. The thing I like about Race right now is that he's being thrown in the fire and being asked to do a lot, and he's getting better. And 
He has shown great feel and IQ for a young front court player. Can really pass it, can put it down. Uh, he's going to be a three-point shooter um, in his time. What he lacks right now, and, and maybe some mobility and athleticism, we're hoping that in the 10 months, you know, that catches up to him and his body is stronger. But in terms of understanding the game for a young guy being thrown in the mix, we've been really impressed. Trisha and then Andy. Coach, Trisha Whitaker, CBS4. Um, I guess I know you touched on the schedule a little bit and how tough that's, that's going to be, but is it tough trying to find a realistic expectation for this team right now? I know you said it's kind of an adjustment. Is it tough to find that expectation and set that expectation when everything is so new? Yeah, I think great question. It's very difficult for any for our staff or anything to put expectations on anything. The expectation for us right now is to do things properly every phase of the day and let that sort of carry over and become our habits. And you know, we're not going to win any games right now. What we have to do is become the best team we can be. We have to become a team that's more familiar not only with one another but chemistry. You know, you, you have to have chemistry. Guys have to know where they're at, where they're supposed to be, what they're supposed to be doing. So developing great chemistry, uh, developing great competitiveness, and getting better at the things that we have to do to win games is the, is the, is the, is the continued process. It's just day to day. And then you know, I think as we get to the games, let's see where we're at. But the expectation level for us is to be ready every single day, and that's going to be a great way of getting started that we'll be ready to play when the games start. Mm -hmm. Hey, RJ, it's Andy Graham from IU Athletics. Uh, I think it's fair to say that Indiana has a sophisticated fan base in terms of folks that have watched a lot of basketball. Uh, what can they expect to see, if you could go into a little bit of detail, uh, what they're talking about, back line, man to man, or whatever, in terms of your preferred approach to play with this team, what can they look for stylistically and schematically? Well, uh, I think number one, I love for our teams to be identified as, as hard playing. Uh, we have to be a team that plays hard. Uh, and learning how to play hard through wins and losses is something that's very difficult to do. Through, you know, you take you, the one thing that you don't do, great teams never do regardless, they're never out of the game. And uh, we have to become, number one, a really hard playing team. The other thing is we have to be a team that's really connected, a team that plays hard and covers for one another, that's very aggressive and you understand that the guys behind you have your back and you're allowed to be aggressive. From an offensive standpoint, great spacing, uh, hopefully great tempo and pace, and the ball moves. And uh, not just moves around, but moves in and out. And a team that hopefully can establish a team that plays inside out, that moves the ball, that has great spacing. Um, you know, pace of play, movement, defensively great effort, and hopefully great connection. Coach Michael said from WDRV in Louisville, Kentucky, and I know you said you talked with athletic director Fred Glass a couple of times about this, but I think a lot of people are looking at the Adidas connection here at the school. What kinds of things did you guys talk about, and, and what did you, how did he ensure you, or did you ensure him that this, in fact, was a clean program? Well, you know, Fred and I have discussed things from the first day of uh, conversation on the telephone. They've always been the same. I think our relationship with Adidas over the course of uh, not only his tenure, but my short tenure has been great. We look forward to continuing it. Um, but we have no reason to believe anything else. Jack. You talked about Duran, and we've, you've talked about Duran since the spring, but I know you're still kind of gearing up for full practice. But as you think about kind of the Duran you worked with in the limited workouts in the spring and the one that you're getting ready to see here when practice opens, what's, what are the biggest differences in your mind? Well, the biggest difference for Duran is going to be to do it every single day. You, know, you have to be able to bring it every single day. You can't have a couple good days and then all of a sudden, you know, you, you kind of tail in. So the effort level and the ability to do it from the start to the finish with great uh, consistency and technique and not taking plays off, you know, that's a big thing for him. Not being lazy at times defensively, you know, things like that. We'll be really on top of Duran in terms of the technique and the effort level because when you don't have those two things, you foul and we can't afford that with him. From an offensive perspective, he has great feel. We have to be able to get him the ball. And I think that the more he touches the ball, the better our team will be, because he can pass, he's got great feel. I think he can score the ball and get fouled. But he also, to me, has a presence. And uh, to me, uh, I'm really hopeful that Duran and, and talking to him is ready, you know, to try and take this on, because it's not going to be as easy as he thinks it is. I think his conditioning level is a thousand times better. 
I think his intelligence on what we're trying to get him to do is you know, really starting to move in the right direction. But it's going to be a, you know, a, a lot of pressure applied to him from our staff for being where you're supposed to be, when you're supposed to be there. Do you know, the laziness and the lack of effort in terms of running the floor back on defense or offense is going to be the difference between you playing 25 minutes and 16 minutes in some games. So that's an understanding of how hard he's going to have to work uh, within our system. But I think that Deron's ready, and uh, I look forward to watching him develop. Uh, I think he's got a great feel for how to play the game on offense. What we've got to get him to do is be really, really smart defensively. Coach Ken Bykoff from Teams again. You mentioned Devontae Green being thinking he could be an Indiana defender. What do you define as an Indiana defender? How do you envision that? Um, kind of hard to show you, I guess, without video, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I think when you see it, you know it. Um, and after watching our guys at Dayton under our tenure there that have become uh, in the uh, Dayton defenders, you see the talent level. Uh, you see sort of the mindset at times where a guy you know, is obviously very, very calculated and smart and can get places at, at time. Um, and you see the toughness. You see the approach that, as a coach, you want to see working in a stance, down. Um, so you can also feel like you, you know, can talk and communicate. So kind of hard to show you without film, but I've seen it with my own two eyes. I've seen guys, you know, really, really work defensively in my time. You know, in coaching, and I think he's a guy that has the talent to do it. All right, coach, thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you.